Welcome back everyone. Of course this is Goku Sun DBZ and this time we are doing a list of, in my personal opinion, 20 primly underrated games. You could consider them hidden gems or just in general, in my opinion, primly underrated. Now we are specifically looking at 20 games from the 7th console generation. So with that being said, we are looking at strictly games for the Wii, the PS3, and the Xbox 360. So with that said, excluding handhelds as they have their own separate generations. So with that said, let me know if you let me do possibly in the future one of these top 20 lists for maybe the 5th generation, 6th generation, 8th generation, or in the future another 7th generation. But with that said, there are no honorable mentions, so let's get to it. Now, this is in ranking no truth specific or, but these are games, in my opinion, that are either hidden gems, criminally underrated, and I think some of these games are overly hated and do not deserve it. And my assistant will be Cthulhu. So with that said, first up, coming at number 20 of the list for me personally, is PlayStation All-Stars. I know, a lot of people do not like this game, they just simply mark it off as a simple clone of Smash. Now, to be honest, I do like Smash. I'm not a hardcore Smash person by any means. I more specifically really enjoyed uh, Smash predominantly on, I think, most specifically, I surprisingly really enjoyed it on the Wii U as well as the 3DS, though I still have a fondness for Brawl. But with that said, coming at number 20, I think of criminally underrated games is PlayStation All-Stars. Why? Because one, it actually has a more interesting environment-like setting with the conflicting style of backgrounds from different game franchises represented, and I actually appreciate those weird crossover like background stages and stuff. I thought it was interesting, as well as some of the characters in the game. And it's a shame that probably my personal favorite character is a DLC, that being Cat. Of course, with her cat Dusty, obviously representing a certain great two games called Gravity Rush. But with that said, that's... And in the future sometime, if you want me to go more in depth on this, I will. But with that said, coming at number 19 is a game... It's from a very big and very popular franchise, Halo. However, I'm amazed at how... Often, no one ever talks about Halo Wars 1 or 2. Admittedly, especially early on Halo Wars 2, definitely had some major issues I've noticed. However, Halo Wars 1, it did come out full and package. Keep in mind, though, this has come from somebody who loves these type of gameplay strategy games because I grew up playing games like, uh, uh, well, Command and Conquer. Uh, specifically, I liked playing at one time Command and Conquer Generals, though I will always have a fondness for the playing it originally on the PS1, Command and Conquer Red Alert. This was, admittedly, I really like on the 360 Red Alert 3, which of course had the great Tim Curry in it. But with that said, for me, at number 19 is Halo Wars. I think this game deserves a lot more love than it gets. If you like games like Command and Conquer, seriously, give Halo Wars a shot. You can get this game relatively very affordable and cheap, no problem. And I highly recommend it. Coming in at number 18 is, I think, a insanely overhated game that I will defend and I will sit on this hill until the day I die defending this game. I've already done in the past a full recorded playthrough of this game. Fable 3, personally for me, out of the uh, four Fable games... Though I don't really count the, um, the, play, the, what is it, the, like, motion sensor game they had for Xbox. It's stupid and garbage, and I don't recommend it. But personally, I liked Fable 3 more than Fable 2. I know I'm in the minority on that, and that's fine, but I love the unlimited magic usage. 
I loved uh, the reusing and some remixing of some tracks, and I loved many of the characters in the game, especially I really enjoyed the villain Reaver. Uh, but also, I liked the villain in certain elements at moments in this game. It felt more like a horror game, in all honesty, which I actually appreciate that. Gained something a little different from what you'd be used to in traditional Fable. But for me, Fable 3 is awesome, and it's a blast. I've beat this game probably seven times, beginning to end. Coming in next, it's 17. So far, we looked at a couple of PS3. Now we're going to look at the first of a few Wii games on the list. Coming in next at number 17 is a game that amazes me more people don't talk about. It is arguably probably the most underrated arguably of the um, Capcom crossover games. And of course I am talking about Tetsunoku vs. Capcom. Now unfortunately this game will probably never see a re-release of any sort on any future platforms, mostly because of copyrights and specific IP. And the fact that Tetsunoku is half of the roster, uh, which is controlled by uh, Toei which is a very, very dangerous entity when it comes to copyright stuff. You don't mess with Toya Entertainment. They don't play games. Ask some artists who have worked for Toya, artists such as specifically Akira Toriyama, if you don't believe me. But with that said, definitely this is a game I think more people should give a shot. If you get a chance to get it, because it's starting to go slowly up, and it's a fascinating, very interesting, unique game in the fact it actually has Alex from Street Fighter 3, strangely enough, on the roster, as well as Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Roll, which I saw also quite interesting. Next up, coming at number 16, a game I'm surprised almost no one ever talks about. When it comes to games based on an anime property, now, surprisingly, there are quite a few, like, Bleach fighting games, as well as Soul Eater fighting games. Um, I even have, like, a couple of them. But with that said, this is surprisingly a criminally underrated game based on a very well-known IP, that is Bleach. Uh, with, of course, Ichigo. And the Soul Society. Um, in general, the game is quite fun. The boss fights are a blast. It's a great hack and slash type game. Basically, the best way I put it is if you enjoy games like um, Samurai Warriors or Dynasty Warriors, you will definitely enjoy this game. I personally had a blast. It's a game I'm glad that I got the opportunity several years back to actually try out. And I couldn't love it more, and I genuinely think more people need to try out this great game called Bleach Soul Resurrection. I highly recommend it. Coming in at 15, from, of course, a company that has become quite infamous over the years for many reasons. Uh, of course, that being Konami. But coming at number 15 is a game I didn't think much originally, wasn't expecting much out of it, given who, but this game ended up making me a pretty big fan of the character. So, surprise, surprise, I ended up having a blast, and I highly recommend this game to anyone. The fact you can get this very affordable on multi-platform, that is Metal Gear Rising. It's a great hack-and-slash action game that, frankly, if you enjoy over-the-top, action games this is definitely a game to give a try i mean you can spend probably 10 12 hours no problem in the game and have a blast it's genuinely i think probably one of the last really fun games done by konami unfortunately coming in next at number 14 another wii game another game that i think is somewhat criminally underrated and that is the game epic mickey now speaking as an old school uh, Disney fan. This game is a big deal, especially given the uh, certain rabbit character, which actually predates Mickey by quite a few years. Now, I personally have seen multiple different documentaries throughout the years on Walt Disney, the actual man, and it's quite a fascinating story, especially the whole backstory to this specific character. 
And it's fascinating, really. And I highly recommend if you get a chance to check out a long, in-depth story on Epic Mickey. But all I can say is it's a blast. It's a really fun action platformer that I think genuinely is great for anybody of any age. If you're a fan of platformers in general and you like old school like Disney, classic era and elements such as that, I recommend highly checking out Epic Mickey and the fact you can get this game easily under $10, no problem. Coming in at 13 is a game I've already mentioned a couple times in the past that I personally really love and I don't know why it gets some of the hate and dislike that it does get. But for me personally, coming in number 13 is Batman Arkham Origins. I know they didn't technically have the original like Kevin Conroy come back or Mark Hamill, but gotta admit the voice actors they chose, like the one who does actually the voice of Joker sounds like a bit younger Mark Hamill. He does a great impersonation of Mark Hamill Joker. I thought he killed it in the game. And I love also the other characters in the game, like Penguin and many others. To me, this is probably, out of the Arkham games, I would have this ranked as probably my number two favorite, only behind Arkham Asylum. And that is it. When it comes to the Arkham games, I love Origins, and I think this game deserves a lot more love than it actually gets. Which is why it comes at number 13 for me. Coming at number 12 is another game... That I'm amazed not a lot of people talk about even though it's a great tactical JRPG game if you like tactical RPGs like uh, games such as Final Fantasy Tactics and stuff like that I recommend checking out Enchanted Arms you and strangely enough about this game weird is the fact you actually have quite a few very familiar voice actors in this game that do the English dub which I recommend checking out because you will hear voices of uh, who's who of many big names from many animes and previous video games and they have quite a few people involved in this game like a few individuals like Christopher Sabat and many others that you know from um, animes done by of course Funimation as well as Viz Media. Now funny enough this game was actually done by a little company called Ubisoft, weirdly enough, but Enchanted Arms is a game I think that more people need to try, and you can collect these golem characters, which you can synthesize and create, so it gives you a great amount of customization for your teams, and using different strategies, it's a really fun game, it definitely has at times very high difficulty curves, but I genuinely like the game, and I think more people need to give this game a shot. Because of it being so underrated, you can get this very affordable. But with that said, you can get this on PS, uh, PS3 as well as 360 both. And personally, I say it's good on either console. Admittedly, I originally play it first on the 360, so I might recommend a bit more. But if you have either platform, pick this game up. It's definitely worth a chance if you like RPGs in general. I highly recommend this, especially if you like a little more strategy involved with your gameplay elements. It's a really fun game, and it is nice to hear all the different recognizable voice actors in the English dub. Some stuff is kind of stupid over the top, admittedly, but still enjoy it, and I love the music involved as well. Coming in at number 11 is arguably, I think, probably one of the most underrated sort of sequel games that I'm surprised more people don't talk about. People love talking about the original Sly Cooper trilogy, yet hardly anybody ever talks about the fourth Sly Cooper game. That is Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, which also I think is a really great time and you can do like remote play and stuff as well with the Vita as this game was also released on that platform as well. But seriously, if you get a chance to check out this game, you can get this very affordable, very cheap. I mean, it is easy to get a hold of, and you can get it for $10, no problem. But with that said, this is a great game, just like any of the Sly Cooper games. I highly recommend, and I hope someday we get a future new game in the series. Not done by some of the original 
talent that was involved in the original games, but still, it's a superb, great platformer that I recommend for, frankly, anyone out there. With that said, now we get up into the top 10, and this is probably one of the biggest hot takes on this list, arguably. Coming in number 10 is Metroid Other M. Like I said, hot take. I like this game. Why it gets so much hate, I may never understand. Then again, there's quite a few games that are very unpopular or popular to hate on, like Fable 3 and many others that people just feel the need to jump on the hate wagon of, instead of actually giving the game a chance. I get it through some of the retcon and stuff done story-wise. I get it in the fact that a little group called Team Ninja was involved in the development of this game. I get it. But, like, with a recent game they did called uh, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, I love this game. Not the greatest in the story, just like the Stranger of Paradise, but, like Stranger of Paradise, the gameplay is what sells this game for me, personally. The gameplay is a lot of fun, it's a blast, when you just focus on the gameplay aspects and stuff, you will find yourself just genuinely sometimes turn your brain off and just enjoy the game for what it is. It's a great action game that I think more people need to give this game a chance. I think it's because of the fact this game is not super popular is why you can get it so cheap on the Wii compared to other Metroid games like the Metroid Prime Trilogy as a perfect example. But with that said, Other M is arguably in my top 10 favorite Wii games of all time. It is arguably in my top 5 favorite Metroid games of all time. I know, bring on the hate if that's how you feel and you want to mindlessly hate on some just because of blind fanboy or fangirl mentality, that's fine. But for me, I will stand up for Metroid Other M and I will continue standing up. I think it's genuinely a fun game, and that's how it's going to be, just like I love DMC. Coming at number 9, another great action game that I recommend anyone playing, arguably also a little biased because of who developed, of course, this game, that being obviously Capcom. And this is arguably one of my favorite action games ever done by Capcom. And it's a game that I think has definitely gained quite a hardcore cult following throughout the years, plus some awesome DLC. I know technically the final true ending is kind of crap that's DLC, but the fights are epic nevertheless. And seriously, if you've never tried Ashura's Wrath, give this game a shot. You will be surprised. It is arguably one of the best action games in years from Capcom. Yes, it had many issues early on. I'll be the first to admit that, like many Capcom games, but I think like many other Capcom games throughout time, has been actually more kind to the game, and I think more and more people will look back on this game more fondly throughout the years. But for me, Usher's Wrath is a game I will always stick up for, and I will always defend, and highly recommend to anyone to give this game a shot. If you want a good, over-the-top, nutty, completely bonkers game, this is a great one. Coming in next at number 8. Another interesting one. Arguably one of the cases where a video game based on a commercial or movie ended up surpassing the actual movie it was based on. And I'm specifically, though, talking about this version for... X-Men Origins Wolverine, the, as it's called, Uncaged Edition. I highly recommend because it includes extra material in the game. It's a great, just hack and splash action game, like many others out there. I will say this, if you've played Deadpool, you'll like this game. That's the uh, best way to put it, it's a lot of fun. Though to be fair, I don't hate the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie as much as some people, but still, I will say this is 10 times better than that. The game itself is just a lot of fun, great, mindless action. Good reason why it's rated M. Definitely mature rated for a very good reason for the blood and gore and language. 
but nevertheless, if you want a good, solid, great action game to play, I highly recommend X-Men Origins Wolverine. Next, coming in at number 7, which is, I'm sure, going to be a very weird one, and specifically the Wii version of the game. And that is a little game called Silent Hill Shattered Memories. And this is not the last Silent Hill game on the list, so just know that. But 7 is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Now, personally, I originally played this game back years ago on the PS2. I thought it was great. It definitely over took time for me to really get used to playing with the Wii Motion stuff. Arguably, it's one of the few games where I actually think the motion controls actually make sense, in all honesty. Seriously, if you get a chance, try out Silent Hill Shattered Memories. It's actually quite interesting. The game, though, unfortunately, is getting rather pricey, so if you can find a copy for a reasonable price, jump at it. Just since I picked up the game a few years ago, it's like tripled to quadruple. So, just know that going in. So, with that said, yeah, if you, it's sort of like a reimagining of sorts to the original game. It's an interesting idea and take. I personally really enjoyed it, and it interesting elements plus how it actually it took the motion control aspect. I'm actually surprised at how well the game actually works with motion controls. Genuinely surprised me, nevertheless. Arguably in my top five favorite Wii games. Maybe even top three. But yeah, Share Memories is a criminally underrated horror game. Coming at number six. In my opinion, maybe the greatest Transformer game ever made. Definitely from a storytelling perspective, as an old school fan that grew up with original Gen 1 Transformers, I absolutely love this game. It has some seriously great, high octane, insane action moments in the game, but the story itself actually excels on every level. This is how you wanted Michael Bay Transformers to be, was like Transformers War of Cybertron. This game is insane, it truly is a game that was designed as a love letter to Gen 1 fans, as well as Beast War fans, just from certain aspects and things, but I do appreciate it, and in fact you will definitely recognize a few of the voice actors chosen in this game, and you can get this on other platforms as well, it's on PS3, personally this is the version I always played, but seriously, you get a chance to pick this game up while you have a shot. Because it's more than worth a playthrough, in all honesty. Coming in at number 5. It's definitely a game that has become quite the cult hit throughout the years. A little game called Alice Madness Returns. Weirdly enough, it was, of course, ended up done by... Electronic Arts, which is arguably one of the devils of gaming nowadays. Still, it definitely has a lot of interesting creativity. It's a much more, very much dark take. Though to be fair, the Alice in Wonderland books aren't necessarily very, like, super bright, happy like Disney. Sort of like the Oz books as well in that aspect. But with that said, Alice Madness is actually quite an interesting game. Very much agree with the mature rating. It definitely had at times some uh, glitch issues from the time to time. However, luckily nowadays you can play without pretty much any issues of any kind with that stuff. It's a very interesting, unique game. I can't really describe any other game that comes to mind from the 7th generation. Anything similar to Alice. Seriously, this game is really bonkers, but it's very suitable, and I like the somewhat over-creepy version of the certain cat in this. I much prefer, I like this darker take, in all honesty. It makes um, Tim Burns take on Alice in Wonderland look like, well, unicorns and rainbows in comparison. This is very grim and dark, but very good, in my opinion. Coming in at number four. Of course, 
the first of two games which I always bring up on occasion when I have the opportunity to, The Darkness. Great first person aspect game and the fact that you want to blow out lights and stuff around you in the game in order to have more power and stuff with your uh, demons you control with the darkness. But with that said, the Darkness game is great, very much deserves the M rating, probably the most mature out of every game on this list, hands down. It's a very dark, very grim and gruesome game, but if yeah, blood and gore doesn't bother you, and if you were also a fan of, of course, Spawn, like myself, then you're definitely no stranger probably to the darkness, as well as to Witchblade. Though unfortunately, Witchblade wasn't so lucky and never really got a game, did get an anime series, but that's about it, unfortunately. But The Darkness is a game that I think deserves more love than it gets. You can get this multi-platform from the set of the console generation, very affordable too, I might add. I also recommend while you're at it, pick up Darkness 2 as well. You'll do yourself a favor, both games are superb. I maybe like the second a bit more, but still, I have to hit this arguably in the top 5 of this top 20. Coming in at number 3. Another incredible game, surprisingly exclusively, however, to the 360. Uh, had a lot of people who were involved with the making of games such as little games called Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 8 and that is of course the game Lost Odyssey. Now if you're used to uh, traditional old-school Final Fantasy and square soft games of the time then you're gonna know how to play Lost Odyssey though just know there are certain types of items you'll need equipped for specific types of boss battles in order to really be able to beat certain bosses. There are definitely a lot of tricks and strategies involved in this game. Now, to be fair, between side quests, main quests, and stuff, this game can actually take you to like 150 hours. That's how big this game is. It's definitely old school. It's a four disc 360 game. And yeah, it's massive in size, but in life, it's nothing strange to me given the type of games we played back in the fifth console generation, it wasn't uncommon to find a hundred plus hour game. It's a great game with many, I think actually pretty decent voice actors. I like the, a lot of the characters also, definitely much reminds me and feels more like a Square game of the 90s from the golden age of Square. But with that said, second to last, we have to go back to Capcom with an action game I've already mentioned a few times in the past called Remember Me. It's a great third-person action game that takes place in Neo Paris. Though you will be staying more in the under levels, but it is interesting also with elements in the game like about four times of game toll, you'll be able to manipulate and change and alter people's memories, thus the name Remember Me. Also the fact the main uh, heroine protagonist, of course, ends up losing memories and stuff. This is a game I'm surprised more people don't talk about because the combat mechanics of the game is actually quite rich and the customization to how you can change your combat, like your, how you want to play out like your combos and everything in combat is actually quite fun and quite rich actually in mechanics. To be fair, I kind of expect something like that though from Capcom if we're being honest, I always expect at least in most of their games to at least have a decent richness in combat mechanics, whether it be fighting games or action games like Devil May Cry. But yeah, for me, I actually hold Remember Me in the highest of regards. It's a criminally underrated hidden gem from Capcom in my opinion. Last but not least is a game I've mentioned many times and I love this game. And I love all the major side quests. Yeah, there are a huge man huge amount of variety of enemies in the game, but I still nevertheless love this game. It's in my top five favorite Silent Hill games. And that's not saying anything easy because the fact Silent Hill is my second favorite horror series of all time. It's pretty much neck and neck with Resident Evil in all honesty. 
though it's been, I think, a somewhat more consistent than Resident Evil as a whole. But with that said, coming at number one for me of, I think, criminally underrated games, that honor goes to a little game called Silent Hill Downpour, which is a game that deserves a lot more love than it gets. Now, it is interesting in recent time, it is starting to go up. When I picked this game up, it was like $10 brand new. Now, good luck. But with that said, like with Shattered Memories, I do think this game deserves more love than it gets. And it's interesting because the fact the game plays more of like an open world Silent Hill game. Which is interesting to say the least. And one of the last few games I genuinely really loved from Konami. Unfortunately, still great music like any Silent Hill game. The combat mechanics, I think, are a little bit better than the earlier games. Uh, I do hate how you have to constantly change weapons because weapons break relatively easy, which isn't great. And I am glad at least the quick time events aren't nearly as bad in this as they were in Homecoming, at least. That's one of the bright sides. One of the only reasons I don't, don't put Homecoming in this video. Maybe a future, but that is it. That is my top, in my opinion, 20 of the absolute biggest criminally underrated Ken Jim games of the 7th console generation between the Wii, the PS3, and the 360. So leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts are, and of these games, which ones have you played? Which ones have you not played or thought about checking out? But I do highly recommend all of these I do genuinely though highly recommend specifically Downpour as well as I definitely because the price is so reasonable Remember Me is another great and for RPG fans out there do yourself a tree and check out Lana Sodacy. But until then I'll see y'all next time. Same to time, same to jump. Stay safe out there everyone.